Hi, my name is Kambi's Mostobiza, the Managing Director of Super Yacht Shipyard LLC. And I want to speak about picking the perfect hull shape and the hull type. And we're talking about hull shapes. It could be a full displacement hull, a semi-displacement hull, also known as uh, semi-planing hull or pl a planing hull. All right, you could pick depending on, for example, if you're creating a cargo ship, you would look to create a full displacement hull that would provide greater stability, but it would travel at a slower speed. A, a semi-planing hull would travel at a faster speed because it would have less friction and less water resistance, less drag. Um, so it's, it's really a trade-off depending on what type of ship you're looking to create. If you're looking to create, for example, something like a, a passenger ferry ship, a row row ship, then again, a full displacement hull would be more to your advantage because it would create greater stability. If you're looking to create something like a, a motorboat, then you would look to create a semi-planing hull, which would have both the advantage of stability as well as providing you with greater uh, speed, right? So it, it's really a trade-off and it comes down to what you're looking to do. Are you looking to create an expedition? Are you a, a vessel? Are you looking to create a, an expedition vessel? Are you looking to create a research vessel? Uh, then probably something like a swath hull catamaran uh, would be the perfect hull type because it would provide greater sea keeping, greater stability, uh, and that means less uh, motion, less seasickness for individuals who it might be their first time uh, getting onto a ship, and they would appreciate that smooth ride rather than the mono hull which has that rolling and heaving motion and listing and that's what you're going to get, going to get with the mono hull and then you have the trimaran which would be something like a mono hull but would also have two amas to provide greater stability and again that would be to the advantage uh, of individuals who like uh, the smooth sail the, the smooth ride and would appreciate uh, the smooth sea keeping that would prevent uh, a lot of motion and, and creating seasickness on board. So it really comes down to first asking the question, what is the purpose of this vessel? What do you want to do with this vessel? Is the purpose, is it an expedition vessel? Then you would need a special type of hull because you would probably have to break ice at one point or another if you travel, uh, whether far north toward the North Pole or, or south toward the South Pole, you're eventually going to come across ice that could damage your hull if your hull is not specially designed to deal with that. So again, you have to ask what the purpose of the vessel is before the design of the vessel is presented. You would have to say, okay, it's an, it's an expedition vessel. Okay, so you know that has its own parameters versus a, uh, you know, a motor speedboat. Right versus a uh, you know two hundred and fifty foot super yacht versus a cargo ship. Right, each has their own parameters that would have to be taken into consideration because each has their own specific purpose. The purpose of a container ship is to travel back and forth and to make money. The purpose of a pleasure craft like a super yacht is to be taken out. Uh, maybe 20% of the year, whereas something like a cargo ship would be working 80 to 90% of the year because it's generating money nonstop. So you would have to first talk about what the purpose of that ship is, and then the design could be uh, based around that. You know, if you're looking for a lightweight, uh, a, a very lightweight motorboat that could travel very fast and it's probably going to be the size of a tender, then something like fiberglass would be perfect for using in that type of hull. But if you're talking about creating something like a cargo ship that's going to have a lot of wear and tear and it, uh, it's, it's going to be being used 80 to 90 percent of the time uh, of the year, then something like a you know thick steel hull would, would, would serve its purpose much better. But if you're talking about something like a 250 foot super yacht, then an aluminum hull would do much better uh, for that, right? So you have to talk about what the, uh, 
you know, the needs are and, and what the purpose of that vessel is, what the purpose of that ship is. So then the design can be based around that and tailored to meet uh, the specific issues and problems that uh, each of those, uh, you know, purposes would come across. Again, like we, we stated, the expedition vessel would traveling to the North Pole would have to break ice, right? Um, you know, is, is the purpose, uh, you know, is the purpose, and, and again, it can be destination purpose as well. Some people say, look, I'm, I'm looking for a super yacht um, to travel, you know, the Bahamas, right? And I'm gonna spend most of my time traveling in and out of the Bahamas. Then something like a catamaran would probably be much better for someone uh, who's going to be uh, traveling to, to the Bahamas. And these are all things that have to be weighed. It could be destination specific as well as we, as we just stated. So f first discovering what the needs are and where it's gonna be used and for what purpose it's gonna be used so that it could be designed to deal with not only the wear and tear, uh, but also to provide high performance and durability uh, over a long period of time. And that's what it is. If you like this video, please visit facebook.com slash superyachtshipyard. You can also visit linkedin.com slash company slash superyachtshipyard, or you can visit us by going to yachtshipyard.com. This video was brought to you by Super Yacht Shipyard. Super Yacht Shipyard is an engineer to order shipbuilding company based in Florida. Thank you for watching.